Hello everybody and welcome. This is a Hyundai Ioniq 5. I'm lucky enough that I've now spent a bit of time with the Ioniq 5, including driving one all the way from Edinburgh down to here in Bournemouth, so 500 miles in a day. So I've got a few opinions on it. This is going to be a quick video about what I do like and don't like about the Hyundai Ioniq 45. So this example here, just before I get into it, is what they call a Project 45. It's basically the launch edition car that you had to pre-order from Hyundai and it's not available anymore and includes a couple of differences with the trim, but basically all the packs, the tech pack and everything is included in this example. And it also includes this solar roof, but don't get too excited about a solar roof because you now cannot order that anymore from Hyundai in the UK for some reason. I think you can in Germany, but not in the UK. Anyway, let me show you around the car. So what I do like, I like the look of it, I really do. Again, really bold uh, uh, Hyundai have done something do so different. I think it's a really interesting design. Well done, congratulations on them and doing it. I've given my opinion before, I don't think it's especially pretty, but I do appreciate just how different it is. This one's finished in this kind of satin uh, metallic paint, and that looks fantastic. It really stands out. I love the finish of it. Is it going to be difficult to repair later on in life? Possibly so, but it does look great. I love the look of the headlights, they're nice. Although they're LED, they're not actually matrix. If anything, they look like they should be matrix because they're all in pixels, um, like Minecraft, but actually they're static, they don't do dynamic stuff. Would have been nice to see that. But this bit here actually lights up at night of all these stripes. So the look, the design, some of the styling features I think are fantastic. These little bits here, by the way, are little vents that open and close as needed for I think aerodynamic advantage, maybe some cooling. So I like that bit. I like the big clamshell bonnet. And then under here is a little bit more storage, but as you can see, pretty limited. A magazine and maybe one small cable. This one has these 20 inch wheels and I like these. Do you know what, it still rides really nicely, um, but these wheels look cool. They're different, a little bit fiddly to clean. They look good, although the smaller wheels would probably give you better economy. I like these pixelated lights as well. I like the back of it, it looks nice. Don't under underestimate the size of this car. It's quite a large car. It's not like a VW Golf, it's a lot bigger than that. Um, but yeah, all round, well done Hyundai for doing something that's stylish and different. H-Track is Hyundai's language for four wheel drive. So this is a dual motor version. Like most dedicated EV designs, the battery sits all under the floor here. This example has a 77 kilowatt hour gross battery, estimated about 73 kilowatt hours usable. There is a smaller battery available with, I think, 58 kilowatt hours usable. But I'll talk to you a bit more about range on this in a minute. So by the time you have that battery under the floor, a lot of cars, Model 3 Tesla, for example, with a roof line about here, means that the height between the floor and the seats and the occupants inside are a little bit cramped. But this car here is overall taller. So it doesn't look like a hatchback. It doesn't look like an SUV. It doesn't look like a four x four, but it kind of is like a bit of a combination of all of them. But that extra height gives it the space inside. So the extra height of the car gives it really good space inside here. So loads of headroom. The seat to the floor is pretty good. Uh, more comfortable than the Model 3. I'll get my toes under the seat in front. Um, there's also some window blinds in the back. That's good. And there's also heated seats in the back. That's good. I can also recline this seat here somewhere here. Different angles. That's pretty good. It's comfortable. There's a button here to move this forward a bit if you've got time to wait. Gives you a bit more space in the back. That wouldn't be very good. But that's good. Comes with a power tailgate. And apparently there's two different speed settings for this on the menu system. So if this is a little bit fast for you, you can opt to open it slower for some reason. Anyway, inside here, it leaves a fairly good sized boot. It's not as deep as some, but it is quite wide. Quite a lot of hard plastics on here, which you can imagine getting scratched a little bit over time, but it's okay. I don't really like this kind of flimsy parcel shelf thing. That's gonna be taken out and probably just left in a garage. And under here, there is a little bit of storage space, but not much. So by comparison, a Tesla Model 3's boot is obviously just a bit more smaller and limited. It's not as wide, although the floor space isn't. What on earth has he got in here? <laughs> this is Joe's, look at that. Ready for another day at the office. <laughs> Genuinely didn't know these were in the boot of this car and still don't know why they're there. I think the back seat of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 is more comfortable than the back seat of a Tesla Model 3. There's a greater gap between the seat and the floor, so my knees aren't quite so high up like they are in the Model 3. Although, headroom isn't too bad in here, to be fair, but there is more in the Hyundai. But at least on the Ioniq, I can still open the door handles even with gloves on. Very handy. <laughs> I can't close the door, but I can, there we go. Yeah, there's definitely more room in here for my hat. 
Well, not by tons, but here this is way more comfortable to sit back and my feet are much lower down. So this is a more comfortable rear, more spacious than the Model 3. Yes, can I do that in the Model 3? <laughs> you can't. Yes, see? Not that impractical, is it? <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get out there. The Model 3's door design allows for a boxing glove hook. That's better. No, it's not. <laughs> can I get out of a Model 3 with boxing gloves? Yes, there we go, easy. So this car includes the connector to charge from this to a three pin socket, where you can power things like microwaves, coffee machines, or a Tesla S85. This car is currently charging from this car. That's pretty cool. Not very fast, about 10 amps, but it's charging. In the back there's a couple of USB-A, but not USB-C, but there's under here a three pin socket, another one. And again, this is actually also charging our Tesla. In the front, I do like how this moves backs and forwards. That's good. Open floor, that's good. Again, USB-A's here, so no USB-C. Wireless charging pad, that's good. Armrest storage, good. Big armrest, comfortable, comfortable seats. All good. Ventilated seats, good. Draw glove box. I like that. That's good as well. This trim here, by the way, is slightly different to a Project 45 to a normal one. I think this is a different colour combination with the orange stitching. So you wouldn't normally get that, I don't think. And the video about the Ionic 5 wouldn't be the same without saying how good these reclining seats are as a passenger can't use it as a driver and obviously there's somebody behind me you can't use it but this as a passenger on a long journey is very good what's it like in an accident don't know you could have a nap whilst it's charging but you probably won't really be able to do that because it charges quite fast actually mm, even like that's good to be fair good seats Driving position's good, visibility's good. I've got a head-up display, that's pretty good. Steering wheel feels nice. It's a comfortable place to be. It's got a much softer ride than the Model 3. Plenty of performance. In sport mode, it has strong punch, 0 to 60 in a bit over five seconds. And it's quite a quick car. It feels nice, really comfortable. Project 45 has this funny little badge here, magnetic, so you can move that around or put it on your fridge at home. Be constantly straightening that up though. Or was it be one key that do my head in? Just like that. I bet there's someone out there who doesn't realize that to open this charge flap, you can push that. You just have to push it quite hard because you're actually pushing that button underneath. Anyway, charging speed. It does charge really fast as long as you can find the fast chargers. Over 200 kilowatts, which was enough when I tested this to take it from 5% to 55% in just 11 minutes. That's really good. Fantastic charging speed. Great for top up. It does then slow down after 50%, but even then 5% to 100% brimmed took 45 minutes, which is very very good you wouldn't normally do that you'd normally move on sooner but i was still eating my noodles when i tested it and its charging speed is fantastic real world range on this for my test 200 to 250 miles what does affect this car because of its fairly sort of blunt front end and it's quite tall is its high speed efficiency so higher speeds not too much over 200 miles to a full charge but around town lower speeds it was much better you'd probably do more like 250 miles if you were just a bit sensible i like the shape of that rear spoiler how that goes in there and it comes through anyway uh, what are some of the things i don't like well let's nitpick a little bit uh take this in the right context because overall it's a good car I'm going to cover that in a minute but there are some niggles as always as with most cars when it's unlocked and you leave it unlocked these handles stay out on a tesla model s they're out when it's unlocked but after a minute or two they go back in so at least it looks locked these literally stay open if you leave it unlocked it does have keyless entry and walk away door locking so they do close themselves although if you walk up away but then go back near it unlocks then walk away again it doesn't seem to relock itself i noticed something like that so in theory, if I walk up to this car with the keys in my pocket and I go to the boot, the boot opens. Loads of shopping. Baby. It's not, there's no foot sensor, is there? So the Honda Ionic 5 has got this sensor, so you walk up to the rear of it. It should detect that you've just walked straight to the rear of it, unlock and open the tailgate. 
I had it work once, but there's obviously a distinct pattern to it and I can't always seem to make it work. Far from always make it work. Open, open. I've got heavy shopping. No. I've got the keys in my pocket now, but will it unlock? It's unlocked. Now I'm gonna to go to the boot, heavy shopping. Come on. It's locked itself. So now I'm gonna walk away, it's locked itself, okay. And now I'm gonna walk back up to it with some shopping. Go on. Ooh, it does work. Put my shopping in the back. Close that, I suppose I have to do that manually. That hasn't unlocked. Keys out of the pocket. Haven't quite got to grips with the auto lock, unlock, walk away, open the boot automatically thing yet. I'm sure there's a knack, I'm sure there's a method, I'm sure if you use it enough, you'll get used to it. So it's still a button to turn the car on and off. A lot of cars now, you get in, put your foot on the brake and the car starts. With this one, you do have to go to the labor effort of actually turning it on. And you need to do that if you want to run the climate as well, I think. I didn't see a sort of shortcut to just run the climate if you're sat in the car with it off whilst it's charging. The, the lane assist autopilot thing, it's sort of okay, but what I found when I was driving it, it was just doing this all the time in the lane. It was just kind of fidgeting. So I ended up not using it. So will that be better with software updates as it comes through or not? Maybe, because otherwise it was sort of okay. I like these paddles for the regen adjustment, that's good. I like to see that in lots of cars. I like when you're driving this car and you indicate, this one is showing me a camera view from the right hand side of the car. And if I indicate the other side, left, I like the way it does that, that's good. Is that part of a tech pack? I think that's part of a tech pack, but I like that, that's nice. This, rest of this, it's okay, you get used to it. Do you know what? They, there's sort of better software out there now. It sort of feels a little bit out of date. There's nothing sort of particularly wrong with it. I think you're getting this from a lot of cars and think this is amazing. But actually compared to a lot of EVs now, the software here is a bit out of date, can be a little bit slow compared to some. So if this was an infotainment system from a five-year-old car, I'd believe you. I'm also not that keen on the graphics here, to be honest. So there's different graphics in the display here based on your driving mode. So eco, normal, sport. But what's the point? They don't really kind of do that much. So having these graphics there, it's just kind of using up screen that could be better used, I think. The car feels solid, it feels durable, and the steering wheel, it's got quite a nice kind of luxury feel to all these bits, but it's sort of let down by quite a lot of beige, grey, greyish plastic. So, you know, here, 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 here. And that just lets it down a little bit for me. Too much greyish plastic. New word. There you go. So this car has heated and cooled front seats. Brilliant. And I like cooled front seats. However, what I did find is I put them on three. It was too cold, too still too cold. I went to one on the ventilated seats and it was still too cold so there needs to be a half setting for the cooled seats. First world problems but they're just too damn cooled. Most journalists criticise these stalks for not being that nice and kind of cheap and off a toy or something. Uh, I'm not going to say what toy but I agree. Again it just they could be a bit better. I think it lets the side down. It lets the side down. Better stalks please Hyundai. See, my, I'm too cold now. This number one ventilation is just too cold. Now I've gone hot. Don't want hot. I have to be off. That's a shame. Apple CarPlay. It does have Apple CarPlay, but I found, at least on my device, which is a couple of years old, I have to plug it into the USB down the front here. It's not wireless Apple CarPlay. And if you're going to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it should now be wireless, please. Like most cars now, it has lane assist. And if you're going to veer out of your lane, it will beep at you. Fine. But you can't permanently turn it off. You can turn it off on each drive, press and hold this button, but you can't kind of say always off. And the problem with that is in the UK, even my commute, there's a lot of country roads and just by way of your driving, you're gonna be on or near or crossing white lines in the center of the road. And this car will beep at you every single time, unless you remember on every single journey to push and hold this and turn the whole system off. 
So that's a bit annoying. It's not the only car that does that. I guess in most cases it's perfectly useful, but in narrow UK country lanes, it's a bit annoying. I'm sported by a Tesla, but a Tesla closes and shuts down, locks itself automatically when you walk away. So I'm forever leaving this on. You have to turn it off. You can't even lock it. So if you do have one of these with a solar roof, how good is it? What does it do? Well, it helps charge the battery. It does actually charge the main drive battery and it even does that whilst you're driving. So in theory, it makes you more economical, but in reality, it doesn't do a vast amount. So don't be too dejected by not having it. It's a cool feature, but it doesn't generate a lot of electricity. So I've been trying to test this. I had questions from my other video about how much does it generate? There's sure there's some official numbers from Hyundai, but I did leave it parked in the sun all day, albeit we don't have the longest days of the year right now. Um, and it generated not a kilowatt hour, but a few hundred watts. So it was, it was okay. I think a really long sunny day, you could possibly generate a kilowatt hour, which would mean to recharge the car would take what, 70 days. So a couple of months, two and a half months maybe. But I guess that's not really the point. What it does do is electric cars tend to have what they call vampire drain. The battery can just lose a little bit, just sitting doing nothing. So parked at an airport for two weeks, for example. And I guess what this does mean is it probably prevents that. So it does have some use. If I had the choice of having one or not on a car, would I have it? Yeah, damn right I would. I think it's brilliant. And we should see more of this on cars, even if it just for that reducing the vampire drain and even if it can't really fully recharge a car. So I know I'm okay at moaning about things, but do take it in context because in summary, I really do like this car. I'm not quite as excited over some of the, as some of the journalistic reviews once I've lived with one for a little bit. The software in particular, some of the greyish plastics let it down a little bit for me, but all around good package. It's more comfortable than a Tesla Model 3. It can actually charge quicker than a Tesla Model 3 as well in most cases, but you do need to have access to the really fast charger. So a Tesla makes charging easier, if that makes sense. But it is an all round brilliant car, great family vehicle. I think if you've got one of these on its way, I think you're gonna be very pleased with it. It's a fantastic and different vehicle. So once again, thank you Hyundai for making something so different, so bold. I appreciate that and it's a good package. Just a couple of little bits for room for improvement, but otherwise, yeah, love it. Good stuff. <laughs> can I open the boot with boxing gloves? This video has changed a whole different angle now. What can you do with boxing gloves? <laughs> yes, there we go. Well, Joe's obviously off to his uh, sparring practice this evening with the hat. What kind of combination of stuff does he wear? That's strange. So he's just come back from a fancy dress costume party. <laughs>